Please be joined at this time by Coach Nate Baker, the office line coach, tight ends, to the office coordinator and all that in Savannah State. Uh, coach, it's an honor to have you on today, talk a little offensive game plan, and thanks for joining me. Yeah, definitely. Glad to, glad to be able to do this with you guys, and I've been looking at your stuff online and seeing the resources that you provide to coaches, and um, the more I can do to help you guys out, the better off. So appreciate awesome. you having me. Awesome. Thanks, Coach. Um, so before we get started, if you take a few minutes and tell anybody listening to this kind of how you got your start, you know, kind of wh where you got to where you are now, even from because this is about offensive game plan and maybe even talk a little bit about what the influences were that got you to where you are now from uh, scheme wise and play calling and everything. Yeah, so um, I started off at Georgia Southern as a as a student went to go walk on and I got there and I was like, there's no way that I'll be able to play here. Um, it was with Coach Hatcher, they were spread. So I was a defensive lineman that, you know, my coach told me coming into it, he's like, Nate, you're not going to play till your junior or senior year, you know, if you're lucky. So, but I wanted to coach and I followed Coach Hatcher's track record. And so I went in with him and he allowed me to be a student assistant as a freshman and um, kind of worked my way up. Um, after two years, I worked with Coach Davis. Um, Burton Davis, who's offense coordinator at Army, and Coach yeah. Munkin. And so went from the spread to the under center triple. And then um, in 2013, <clears throat> when we transitioned D1, I became a GA um, with Coach Munkin. And then when Coach Fritz came in in 14, I ended up staying with them. So we got into the gun triple option stuff. And so that's kind of where I've stayed. Um, I was spent the last three years before this season at Savannah State at GMC. So we did more of a traditional spread type deal um, based out of 11 personnel or 20 personnel, however you want to describe it, with the stiffer majority of the time. Yeah. Just running inside zone power, ISO, just a more traditional offense. So um, when Coach Quinn out, um, talked to me about coming back and working with him doing this gun triple stuff, I was really excited about it to kind of get back in the niche that I'd spent a good amount of time in. So everything it's kind of nice because you get a little bit of different I've kind of been in every offense between right. the spread the under center triple now you know the gun triple with inside zone and power and then just being in a base traditional offense where you're inside zone iso power you know stretch running everything so that's been kind of an advantage for me being able to think of it and not just being able to think triple option to a certain degree with numbers and learning the numbers, but also being able to think in a traditional speaking way where it's like, hey, you know, we got numbers outside, let's throw the ball, you know mm -hmm. what I mean, in certain areas like that. So just being able to take that and being in JUCO allowed me to be simple and you had to teach things at a really high level fast and get them to understand it as quick as possible. So I feel like JUCO was a really huge help in just getting me a better, to become a better communicator and understand how to relay to kids and get information to them as fast as possible so they could execute fast. So. Yeah, absolutely. I think, um, you know, we're going to talk specifically about some game plan and stuff, but before we even get into that, you know, it doesn't matter if you're talking about peewee football or, or big time college football, the base plan is always what you got to run first. So you, you sound like you run a bunch of different stuff and that's in, in your career, you've been fortunate to do some different things. What makes what you guys do now with the gun triple? What do you think are the advantages of that? Before you can get just your base plan, before we can get into specifics on down distance and all that, what what do you think is great about that offense for what you guys have? Well, for us, you know, we took over a spread offense. So, um, with with transitioning to the to the gun triple, we run two plays. We run inside zone and power. Um, those are our two base plays. Everything comes off of that. So, for the kids. Like it, they they get it, you know, and they're built. Mm -hmm. Whereas if we tried to come in and run under center triple, you know, I took over with eight offensive line and that was it when I had in the spring. Had 12 all last year. Most high schools have more than that. So, um, like if we were under center triple, we just probably wouldn't have been able to survive and we weren't built for it, you know, being able to come in late. So being able to rely upon inside zone, um, they understood the concept already. It's just like tweaking it just a hair. So I think – whenever you're taking over an offense, most teams, the majority of them are spread teams, you know? And so that's been, you know, for us, that was a huge advantage just because they knew how to run inside zone, 
you know. And for people that don't understand, Coach, that may be watching this and we've already lost them, uh, they might think y'all are spread because you're in the shotgun. So Correct. tell somebody what's the difference in what you all are doing versus maybe when you say a spread team, which is more of an air raid type team or something like that. Yeah. Well, I mean, nowadays, pretty much everyone's spread the way it lines right. up. You know, I mean, everybody's in the shotgun. Shoot, even the, the understood and triple teams are starting to transition to that. It's just kind of the new age way to just get another answer. And so, um, but with our quote unquote shotgun offense, we're just really trying to send. So my, our philosophy is how are we going to run inside zone? How are we going to run power? And how can we get people to misfit? So that's our basic principle of what we're trying to do. Um, so how can we dress it up and put all the window dressing on it to make people think that we're running triple option, but we're in, when in reality, we're running just inside zone. Right. What I've noticed from watching you guys play, and I really admired Coach Fritz's offense and what, what he did and how y'all spread that from now at Savannah State, and Tulane and all that. I really love that offense, by the way, so I'm a little biased. But I just see it as a little more physical and, and you know, answer to maybe a similar formation to some maybe what some other people are running, but the mindset maybe is a little more physical. Is that fair to say? Yeah, and that's kind of what Coach Quinn wanted to do. He wanted to hit the ball down hill and just punch people in the mouth. And so that's where what we do comes into play. And yeah. running inside zone, that's it. Everybody knows you're running inside zone. And But the good thing about it is it's a physical downhill play, and we're trying to get in the double teams and just move people. And so when we can do that, and is what it does for us, is it keeps it simple and it makes the defense play reactive instead of being able to go on the attack and just attack us constantly. Whether if you want to blitz, you can't always blitz because you're not gap sound in certain other areas. And so that's kind of what we do with our offensive philosophy is try to be physical, try to be sound, and just execute at a high level. And, and still spread the field. That's what I love yeah. about it. Still spread yeah. the field. You still got some of the easy throws. That, I mean, it, you know, that, that's kind of where they are. So we're, we're going to transition here into the real topic. But as we do, I want people to get kind of a mental picture if they hadn't seen your team play for right. what you guys are trying to accomplish. So I pick, this is my list. So this isn't yours. So you may think something different. But, you know, we kind of went through these four things when we game planned. And I thought number, like a lot of these slides I do, number one is the main one. Uh, the first thing we were looking at, 90, I don't know if 90% is fair to say, but a lot of what we were trying to figure out was who who on their team's better than who, who on our team's better than what, who's on their team or whatever. Uh, then we came up with a down distance plan. We had to have some kind of red zone. Or, and then, of course, any other situations that, depending on your level of football, you got to get a little more technical in some other spots than some more than others, you know. Um, so what did you guys look for? When, we're talking about game planning. You know, for you all, I guess it's Sunday. You come in, uh, you get the film. Now you don't come in anymore. I'm sure you got the film on your computer. What's kind of the first thing we're looking for for identifying who's good on that other team? So the way, uh, the way we kind of start is, so I have the luxury of having someone break down all the formations for me, you know, and that's where I kind of get an advantage. So I don't have to break down and sit down and break down all the formations. Um, we have we have an assistant that does that before we get there. So with that being said, when I walk in the door, the first thing I want to look at is our base formation. So when we look at our base formation, which is just 11 personnel, Y off, or with a sniffer, whatever you want to call it, um, either three by one or two by two, that's our base formation. Um, we want to look at, all right, what are they playing? So what front are they playing? Are they an odd front? Are they a slant odd? Are they an even front? Whole nine yards. Four two box. What are they? What's their tendency? And then where's their coverage? So that's the first thing we look at when we start looking at it. And then when we start to look at the personnel, as we look through those base formations out of that base formation out of eleven personnel, we'll start to realize, like, okay. Like this three technique's giving us problems. This three technique's a good player, or you know, maybe it's a linebacker, maybe it's a safety, maybe it's whoever it is. And we start to look and kind of go from there. So I guess really the first thing I look at is not always personnel. It's I want to know what front they're playing, what coverage that is fitting with that front, and what are their three favorite blitzes. And so after we look at that, 
we start to go into it as we watch it, like, wow, this three technique is a dog. Like, we're going to have to figure out how to work around him. You know, we're going to have to start setting the – like, we got into a game versus Charleston Southern where I was playing a kid that was a freshman that hadn't played in a college game before, and I told the other offensive coordinator, I said, look, dog, we cannot – you have to run inside zone out of these two formations. And you have to run it. If it's in this formation, you have to run it right. And if it's in this formation, you have to run it left. If you don't do that, then I can't guarantee results because the three technique, if I had to go one-on-one -on -one with my guard with the three technique, then I was screwed. You know, we couldn't block it. It just was what it was. So, um, you know, we would set the front. So we would, they always set the three to the tight end. So when we got into that game, that was like a freaking dire scenario where it was like, hey, if you put the tight end on the right, then we got to run zone left. You know, if you put the tight end on the right and you want to run zone right, then, you know, it's 50-50 on crap shooting. If you put the tight end on the left and we call zone left and we're trying to split zone it, you got no shot. Just is what it is. So we try to do a pretty good job of understanding that. Now, at our level, you know, with what we're coming in at, a majority of the time, up front, the personnel errors don't come in as much because I get to recruit. So right. with that yeah. being said, usually I'm not going to have as many issues with that. But, like, we play Georgia in 15. We go into the game knowing, like, hey, if they line up in this front, like, we can't run. If they line up in their base front, we can't run inside zone. Like, it's two yards, and we're going to have to roll from there. So we had to come up with counters, and we get into that scenario sometimes. So we look at what adjusts the front. Right. So make some line up with the three technique. Do they always line up with the three technique to the strong side? What's their percentage? Are they a field team or are they a boundary team? You know what I mean? Or excuse me, are they a field team or are they a formation team? So we look at those little things and try to kind of adjust it and say, all right, so this team always sets the three technique and 11 personnel Y off to the, to the Y. Always set it there. So we know going into that, hey, we're going to get the three technique to this side. So now what do we want to do? And then sometimes it might be, hey, we get the three of the field every time. Or, hey, they might be an under team, so they're always going to set it to the boundary. Or if they're a formation team, they'll always set it away from the formation. So we just kind of look and figure out how are they setting their defense. That's the first thing that I want to know is how are they setting their defense. The next thing I want to know is where are they fitting? How are, they, how are they fitting the run? Where are the safeties fitting? Where's the extra guy coming from? And then the third thing we look at is just any type of motions we get. So, and we'll look at all the motions out of that formation, whether it be jets, orbits. You don't get many orbits. You get a lot of jet motions with power reads or just jet across inside zones. And we see how they fit off of that, how the secondary fits. So with us, the good advantage that we have with running this zone triple is they have to either pick to stop the inside zone or they have to pick to stop the quarterback. Mm -hmm. we, we can go into it and see kind of with what coverage they're playing and how their normal fits are. We can go in and pretty much assume like, hey, they're going to play to stop the inside zone or they're going to play to stop the edge. So that's kind of what we look at. Yeah. Well, well, let me ask you this, Coach. What At the high school level – I coached at some fairly big high school level. We would get people that would not be running what we saw on film. I don't know if that's the good way to say it, but we would get a lot of different fronts and a lot of different looks. How often do you guys get uh, something – like do you have to prepare for all fronts uh, in, in during the week, or do you feel like you pretty strongly if they're going to put the three to the, away from the tight end or to the tight end that you so, usually get that? We're – it's probably pretty consistent on we know what we're going to get. Um, I think that's one of the advantages you guys have to some degree. Oh, it's a huge advantage. We, get some, we got some junk defenses, and you planned yeah. on this or that, and it just was a waste of time. I have uh, I've sat down with a bunch of high school coaches during this time to kind of talk through some film with them, and the amount of times that I heard, well, going into the game, we planned on this, but we didn't right. get this, but – you know, we played this two weeks ago and it worked. And so we kind of see that sometimes, you know, like um, we'll play a team that we played an odd team before and we see a team that's a mixed bag front where they'll play predominantly even, but then they will 
throw in some odd in there. And so in that scenario, we'll practice like some odd front stuff to it and be like, okay, if they line up like this, we know where we're going to get, you know? And so we will do it versus that. But if you never see a team line up in odd, and this is our theory on it, if you never see a team line up in odd on film or never line up in a stack look or never line up in their base defense and they come out and they line up in it, they're screwed. Yeah. Because I agree. They don't know how to do it. You know, so now you got to figure out what plays and match it. But we pretty much predominantly, this sounds crazy, but during last season, just because we were short on scout team and just didn't have the ability on scout team to execute what we needed, we actually spent more time going against our defense and didn't even practice really the look we were going to see very much. But we would get like probably 30% of the plays that matched up with certain looks that we could get. But at the end of the day, we were just – executing and that's the best thing about our offense with our inside zone you just block gaps so everybody's gap right on inside zone right everybody's gap left on inside zone left and so with as much blitz and movement as our defense gives us you know I mean it's like you can with as much movement as they do you're pretty much prepared for anything because yeah that's what I was kind of getting at I I think that's the way to go nowadays and I'm speaking in the high school level I can't speak yeah. for at the division one level but in some ways, I always felt like we just kind of threw it out there. And we had a plan. You know, I had a plan to run away from this three technique, or if we got in this formation, I thought they would line up like this. But because we saw such junk, I'm glad you uh, justified that, me saying that. But uh, because we saw all that, I just try not to wind, get too wound up about it because I thought some coaches are bad about paralyzing kids by telling them, okay, this guy's going to be here and this one's going to be here and this one's going to be here. And then they're not. And it just kind of jacks the whole thing up. So I wouldn't, we try to run it versus Audi. If you got too many plays in, if you can't run them all versus whatever. So I think maybe something that helped y'all was going against your, your defense and just not being that worried about it. You know, whatever they threw at you, you had to be ready to block. And it's a huge advantage for us. Yeah. I'll give us that. Cause they're better. They were, our defense is definitely a strong point of our team. Um, we had an offense that was ranked, I think, dead last in Division One. They averaged a hundred and like maybe sixty yards a game, if that. And so we took this over, and we're going in, and it's like we, because we got into a scenario like that early on. We played a, uh, you know, and that goes into it kind of. We we played a we played Florida Tech, who's a solid team, the first game, and they played like a slant odd look, and we just kind of. May, muddled our way through the game. And then the next week we played Virginia Lynchburg, who's a less talented team. But they just lined up in an odd front, and we were able to run speed option on the field, up and down the field. And we knew we were going to do it going in. Then the next week we played Benedict, and they were kind of the same way. But they just lined up – they were big guys that just lined up in an odd front, and they said, hey, we're going to put seven guys on the line. And we were like, well – we're not going to be idiots and run inside zone in that, but we're going to run speed option because that's our next best advantage in that regard. And so, you know, we kind of put that in the play. We don't want to just run plays to run plays. So we put in dart, you know what I mean, to kind of mitigate some of those issues because Lynchburg was a big bear team and and uh, Benedict was just a straight odd front. So we knew we would get some of that, but – you know, we put in certain plays to where we don't beat our head against the wall and just say, hey, we're going to run inside zone into this because at the end of the day, they were better than us up front. You know, maybe not Lynchburg, but um, Benedict was bigger and better than us up front. Had a freshman guard going against the 330-pound D tackle. Like, you know, I'm not going to beat my head and say, hey, go yeah. this guy. You know, so you got to kind of have answers that are different. But at the end of the day, not get away from your base offense. And so, yeah, the key for me in the game. The yeah, you know, and just have little certain things that you go to. And and I think we could have probably done a better job of it, but sticking to those things, you know, like there's there's a couple games where we came out and we said, well, we probably should have done that more. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, we probably should have, you know, yeah. didn't. And so that was kind of a learning experience. Me and, uh, me and Russ, it was our first year actually calling it, and we kind of came from different systems. And didn't have a lot of time to get together before I got hired March 7th. I came in March 17th. We started spring ball the 21st. Um, you know, so we got five days basically to come up with something and just kind of get going. And then in our first game, we're starting five guys that weren't even there in spring ball. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's part of it. Into it going, well, 
who knows what we're going to be good at. So, but the good thing about what we do, in my personal opinion, is with inside zone and power, they complement each other. And we run right, we plays that one sets up the other and we can kind of work it out. And, and like, that's kind of the way we roll with it, but we'll get back on track. I'm kind of getting off with it. So, but yeah, we don't yeah. get that very often. Um, you know, I've seen it a couple of times, like we saw it versus uh, South Alabama in 2015. We played them right after Georgia. They were a predominantly four down team. They came out and ran a base odd look. We had an idea that they would probably do that just because the guy came from Georgia and they had six, Georgia had success against us. Mm -hmm. We threw a 47 on. So, right. you know, I mean, we, we knew like going into that, Hey, like you're not playing your base defense. We're going to smoke you. So. Yeah. That's generally the consensus. It didn't ever bother me when somebody came out with a different defense. I just thought if you sold your soul to it during the week that we had to run it this exact way, you might've been selling it a little wrong to the kids, you know, just, just be ready for whatever. No, you were. Yeah. And I agree with that. Cause I don't, now, you as a coach, you totally have a plan that you totally have an indicator of if we get in trips, they're going to roll the coverage this way and be ready for that and have a play for it. But if they don't do it, it can't make the play horrible. There has to be an understanding of wherever these guys line up, we'll block them or whatever. So for us, coach, at the high school level, you know, we're going to very much, or well, I did anyway, we're going to very much make first down and most second down plays kind of base offense. You might take a shot on. You might have five or six plays you want to take a shot on, and we usually scripted those a little different. But uh, we only kind of scripted the third down plays as far as having a plan on each hash for third and short, medium, and long. What do you guys do for down and distance planning? So, um, and that's, that's kind of where we get into some interesting talks on our side of the ball. I worked with Coach Fritz, and he's a big situational guy. Like, he's all about situations. And so we would script it in certain scenarios. Like we look at kind of first down and second down, similar to you, where we can call any call. But, you know, based predicated on what you're going to see defensively, you know, like some teams are going to be heavier blitz and second down and long, you know, like second down and eight plus or second down and seven, something like that. And then some teams are just going to play base. So we kind of base it off of that. So if we know we're going to get a base look, we'll probably run our base play. If we know we're going to get, blitz on second and eight when we don't get a good play on first down, then we'll kind of have a game plan for it. But besides that, you know, first and second down, it's kind of like you were saying, it can be anything. And for us with ours, like, you know, first down, you might get two on inside zone. Then you come back and you have the triple aspect and the end squeezes, you pull it, you pitch it. Now you're getting 12, 15 score, you know, and we've had, we've had multiple two minute drives where last year where we threw the ball twice, mm -hmm. 50 yards. And we scored versus Albany on our base play on first down and 10 with 25 seconds left. You know, just running triple. They misfit it. They played man thinking we were going to, you know, maybe throw the ball. We ran it and scored. But that's kind of like our philosophy on it. We don't want to get out of our base offense just because it dictates and the scenario dictates it. Would just you change the, would you change the formation maybe? with the base stuff, like maybe change the formation because it was short yardage or change the formation because yeah, we can, but we will, do a lot of the base we'll, stuff. We'll do that. So we look at, and so this is kind of weird. We have, I was talking to a guy about this the other day. So we have our base 11 personnel formation and we can, we can move the receivers. Mm -hmm. You know, kind of what we look for as we get in more detail with it. Okay. So our first is like, how is our base fit going to be? And then we'll look at like three by one adjustments. So we might get certain three by one adjustments. We might get unbalanced adjustments. And that's kind of the next phase of what we're looking for in our game plan when it comes to that. So kind of the way we roll with it is like how they fit the base. Then we go through and then we'll look at all 11 personnels, just our base formations. And then we'll look at all our 12 personnel base formations. And then we kind of go look at the funky sets. All right. So what's their three by one check? Okay, now we get their three by one check. Okay, do they expose the weak side? Is it gonna allow us to get into a scenario where we're good? Then we'll go look at just two by two, basic spread offense, ace, whatever you wanna call it. Just two by two, two receivers out. And then we'll look at that. And so we kind of go through every formation and start with 11, go to 12. We'll look at some 21 personnel sets because we like to get into that. And then we look at over adjustments and kind of go from there and see 
hey, if there's a nub tight end, like, do they get short? If we're in nub trips, do they overset the trip side and not mm -hmm. the side? If we're in unbalanced three by one, where we got tight end on the line with three receivers eligible, are they short or do they overset it? You know, so we can kind of look into that and kind of see where we're finding. But formations is instead of plays, and this is where we differ from people, we're going to run inside zone and power. Now, how can the formation dictate to make them short? And right. so we kind of go to next. And so that's good stuff right there. That's what people so, need to be doing. Yeah. And because why am I going to make it hard on myself to add an extra play in there to coach the line an extra play whenever I can dictate it to where I can get six on six? Mm -hmm. and what we look for. So a defense, when they fit it, they have to have, for us, they have to have a guy in the C gap, B gap, A gap, A gap, and B gap. And then what they do at the end is predicated off of what we'll do next. So if they squeeze in them, we'll pull the ball. If they're doing a good job squeeze scraping and adding one, now we can kick them because now they're short on the backside. Now, if they start to overload the zone side, now we can start to get into, all right, now how do we dictate the two receiver side? Because they have too much defense on that side. So does in a tight end in the backside sure up our zones, you know what I mean? And give us an edge. Because that's all we're looking to figure out is how do we run the inside zone? And if we can be successful running the inside zone, then we can start to adjust it. So, and that's from what a From a game planning standpoint, how much different is this than what uh, Coach Munkin and them did or even Coach Johnson? Like, is it much – I know it's under center versus the gun, but it, the whole concept of they stop us with this, we're going to call this, and they stop us with this, we're going to call this, that's the whole under center Paul Johnson thing. It, yeah, is that kind of similar what y'all doing? Yeah, it's very similar. Um, you know, in theory, in the triple, you can block them all. You know, mm -hmm. the backside in, you read the first one, you pitch off the second one, and you have someone for the free safety. Mm -hmm. Or if it's, you know, too high, you have someone the backside tackle for the backside safety. So in theory, you can block them all. In this offense, you can't block them all. You're going to have one free, and it's usually going to be the backside safety. Mm -hmm. so how do we manipulate him into making sure? So you're basically looking for the backside safety and where he's fitting. Is, he, is the backside safety fitting the quarterback, or is the backside safety fitting the run? Mm -hmm. And so figure out what he's doing, then you can kind of adjust it. So that's where power comes in to be in such a heavy deal is if the backside safety is overfitting the zone, on the back, on the front side of our zone, now we run power, and he basically gets lost in the mix. Yeah. We can kind of adjust it, and that's kind of how the two plays work together and working that. So if they're overset in the front side of the zone, now we can come back and run power and make it look the exact same as triple, whether it be with motion, whether it be, you know, out of a 21 personnel set where we're just faking it and making it look like triple. Everything looks the same, and usually most of the times you're going to get a wider fit with the line. And so if you want me to pull up some film on that, I can, just so you can kind of get an idea of it. But that's kind of the way that we look at it. Yeah, pull some up. Let me stop sharing that. And how they correlate together. So. Would be good. People like that. So. Go back here. All right. So. So here's some of our triples. So we look at this as our base. So this is one of our base formations here. Like everything we do predicates off of this. So we're saying, how are they going to line up? So we know this team is pretty much a slant 50. And they're when they're slant from the field, they're playing three. When they're slant from the boundary, they're playing cover four. All right, so right here, right here, we have a pretty good idea that we're going to get a pull and a pitch here, and we're getting this guy out of place because they're basically playing cover three over here. So we knew in this scenario we were going to the boundary. Now, our execution of this is poor, but so we know right here, like, they're extra fitters on this zone side. So when we look at this right here, this is their extra fitter. So we know right here that we, if we do not pull pitch the ball, we're probably going to get stuffed because they got one on that side. Now that comes into, which I don't, this is just all our triples pulled out. But it was, what we ended up getting to in this game was now they're oversetting this side. We don't really, we didn't really want to, we run power some to this, but now we can run speed option. That's our best. Option. 
Is that your best play away from the eight? Three. Yeah, we would just call speed option and just run at this yeah. guy here and pitch off of him. The safety's playing at 12 yards deep, and then we go from there. We kind of know I'm not going in the game, so we were just looking at it. Now, we didn't know exactly how they were going to fit um, because they were a new staff, and we were a new staff, so it was kind of like going out there like who knows what's about to happen. So you can see it looks raggedy. You can, this is the game that happened after the hurricane. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's two teams. So then we figured out, well, let's put a tight end in the mix now. So now we have a tight end in here. And so with that being said, we look at it this way, with the way we're running it. So we ran two load here. So with the way we're doing it, with this receiver out here, now they don't have anyone fit. Mm -hmm. So we block them with the receiver. We got two for two right here with the guard and the tackle. And now these two will work front side because we're blocking gaps. And that's kind of where we get different. What's the tight end trying to do there, Coach? So the tight end in this scenario is loading the box. So he is loading here to this one. So like I said, we're always going to be one short. In this scenario, we're short here. So this is great for the zone, but this is not good for the triple because we're short. I don't know, take this guy, we'll read him, and we'll probably mm -hmm. him. We had some jacked up rules here um, going into it. Now you'll see the you'll see the guard. I don't know if he turns around here. In this scenario, we should we didn't read a four eye going into this game. So we should not read him. We should read this guy and then pitch out him. And we knew it going in. Now, he reads him as a four eye. You'll see in another clip here in a minute where the, the guard's going to turn around and tell him, hey, it's a four. So he, we told our guards to let them know, or our tackles really, but this is a friend and he's a senior, so the guard ended up telling him. But right here, this is a misread. Now, you look on the front side of the zone, we're good. We have numbers for numbers out here. Mm -hmm. I got a gap. So now we're trying to figure out how we're going to run the inside zone. Well, next time is all we got to do is either go to the sideline. So we got two ways to do it. We can go to the sideline and say, hey, let's just call crush, which is our hand it off. Or, hey, we know they're not going to squeeze scrape. Let's call load to give the action. So we'll load it here. You know, we know we're going to get a give and just hand the thing off. So we kind of do it that way. Um, we weren't very good to start off with. So people just kind of said, hey, hand the ball off. And we said, all right. And we just kind of took it for a couple games until we could figure out how to block them. And so that came with growth. So we're looking in this scenario and we say, in theory, we're saying right now, hey, we're good on the inside zone. I got gaps for gaps. They got three guys covering three gaps. One, two, three right here. All right, I'm cutting these guys off. So if we're at our top performance, we're good to go. In my mind right now, this ball should go through the A gap and we should gash them. They have no fitter. We're gapped up on the front side. If we're running triple here, we're reading this guy. We're pitching off this guy and I got a safety at 12 yards, which is what I want. He ain't making the damn play. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. He screams down and makes the play. Now we got to hand it off. But in theory here, we should hand this ball off and go to the house mm -hmm. if my guys beat their guys. And that's kind of what I do with it. I tell my guys, like, look, I'm getting you in a position to go one-on-one -on -one and win. So if I get gap for gap here and everything's good and we win and you win your block, then we're going to score a touchdown. If you don't win your block, then we're not going to score a touchdown. You know, it just is what it is. So if we cut this guy off, if you cut this four eye off, which you'll see from the tight. So we're getting the motion here. So this is what we want in the secondary rotation. This is perfect. This is the guy we're pitching off here. If we can get this ball in the perimeter, we're in great shape. But we give it, which we should in this scenario. And we hand it off for a good four yard gain. I mean, can't hate on that too much. But you'll see if this tackle cuts this four eye off, we got a really good gain. So that's where it gets a little different. They got five guys and five gaps. 
I got five guys and five gaps. My five win, we have a good play. Their five win, they're going to stop us. You know, and that's where we get a little bit different from most people. I rely on my players to win, you know, not my scheme. Mm -hmm. So I rely on my scheme to misfit the defense and confuse them. So. In the check and even front here. So this is exactly what we're looking for. They overset, rolled cover three to the right. We got a great play call here. If we can pull it and pitch it, we're great. They have no extra fitter. I got gaps for gaps on the front side here. Guard wins, we're good. We're, mm -hmm. we're aiming points just a hair. We can get into the how we block this stuff later. But right here, the center goes back. So he's our extra defender. So if he makes the play, he makes the play. So it is what it is. Now I gotta win this block at two I and then we go from there. So here, let me get out of this one. We'll go to a different game and you can kind of see some other stuff. So we talked about talked about different formations that help us out. So we get to Alcorn. Now we've added a tight end in the mix. So now this is how our best way to run the zone right here is we get a tight end in there. So this safety is a non-factor in the fit or this corner is a non-factor in the fit, depending upon how they, how they do it. Right here, they check cover two to this nub, this nub check. So this is where we get in the really good numbers. So we looked at this going into it and we're like, we want to run this all day long because they play cover two. So we knew when they played their cover two look, they can't adjust their safeties. They're playing basically a basic cover six here. They can adjust their safeties, and then with motion, they bumped him in. So this was an in-game. Well, no, this is one of our first ones. We knew going into this, this would be a good one for us. So we knew they would rock it just a hair. We're getting a stunt, which we didn't anticipate on it. But hey, they stunted. But we get a pull here. And we stretch it to the perimeter, and now we got everything we want right there. You notice if we hand this ball off here, we do a good enough job blocking it, we're probably going to go score. Mm -hmm. Or at least we'll be one-on-one -on -one with the free safety. So we knew going in when they played cover two, he wasn't in the run fit at all, so we were good. But we didn't see this formation on film. We just saw 12 personnel nub, whether it be, you know, whether it would have been 12 personnel with an H right here. Mm-hmm. Of personnel with the H right here, they checked to a nub tight end every time they checked six. So we did see some where we would see twins, and anytime they've got twins, we knew they played cover four. So instead of putting the tight end here, we just put it as a back in the backfield, and we knew we were going to get the same look. We kind of take looks like that, and we're like we would never see this look on film, most likely. But we in 12 personnel and we have an H here, they're gonna check the same because that's their tight end nub check, you know? And so that's one thing we really look for when we're game planning. That's what, good stuff, Coach. That's what of. that people can get out of this because I think everybody's so different in some of their unique formations that yeah. what you're asking is what can we get off the film to help us then when we don't see exactly what we're gonna run. That's, that's, good. that's good advice. There. So going into it, we know they have three different checks. So people have three different checks. They have a trips check, that's number one. So everyone has a trips check. If they don't have a trips check, then you're good to go. Because, but everyone yeah. has a trips check. Everyone does. So you got your trips check. Then you get your nub tight end checks. So everyone has a nub tight end check. They play cover three or they play cover two. Whoever they want to get in the fit. Here they decided they wanted to play cover six to twins nub. So you're good to go. You know what I mean? So I know mm -hmm. four over two or three over two here. And you can tell by some coordinators, they always like to have an extra. So if you're looking on film and you're saying, all right, I get two receivers, we could be in, we could be in 11 personnel. You know what I mean? We could be in 11 personnel and I know they're going to get three over two. We could be in two by two and I know they're going to try to get three over two on both sides. And so you know that going into some people, you know, you're in two by two, they put the wheel in the box or stack them over the end and they try to push them late. Like our defense always play a six-man box and spike the end and then let the wheel get out late. 
try to bounce it to them. Or they'll play a 4-1 and spike the end and let that nickel play that weak side, you know, late and let the mic run. So you kind of get into it. Like, we know when we get two receivers, we're getting three over two every time. So we got that side solved. Now what's their nub check? Okay, we know their nub check is to play cover six. So on film, you might have a trip only like a three by one with a nub tight end backside. Mm -hmm. You know, that puts defensive coordinators in the biggest conflict because now they have a nub tight end and a trips check. So what are they going to do? And so we kind of look for that stuff. So even if we didn't see like a 12 personnel set on film, which usually we'll get one, you know, we'll have probably about 10 to 15 clips at least of depending upon how deep we are in the season and how many games we got, we'll at least have 12 to 15 clips of 12 personnel. We can kind of go in and adjust it and say, okay, well, here's nub trips. This is how they line up to nub trips. They check six. All right. And then they'll trips check it also and play the mic, bump the mic out. You know what I mean? And so we can kind of play it and say, all right, they'll play three over two in base personnel. And then to a nub tight end, they'll play cover two. So, you know, what we're going to get every time, even with yes. not formation. No, that's good stuff, Coach. This is a great play, by the way. Yeah, it's nice. Love it. We ended up having a lot of success out of this formation for some reason. I don't know why. But I always like twins close or how we call it twins close. The same formation we had the, the nub side yeah. and the twins on the other side. I think the same way with trips, too. I thought those gave people the most problems. Yeah, and not and that was the advantage we had was not a lot of people got in 12 personnel or 20 mm -hmm. personnel. So for people, they didn't have a lot of answers to it. And so this was kind of like, we're getting screwed. We don't know what's going on. We know they're going to line up like this to this set. So we kind of like have, we have this set and just our basic 12 personnel twins, whether it be Y off right or Y off left, we can make it three by one or two by two. And we can kind of go from there and say, well, we know we're going to get this look. Doesn't matter. Like, mm -hmm. this is the only thing we've seen on film. We'll get into it and make sure it stays sound. And if it, if for some reason something jacks up, they can only jack it up so bad. You know what I mean? They can't adjust it totally. So here we tried to get in 21 to prevent blitz because they were blitzing us a lot. We got in 21, they blitzed us anyway. They said, screw it. So, but is what it did is it ended up protecting us on the outside because they overset the defense to the tight end now. So that was kind of our philosophy on it. That was play eight though. So, and so the way we kind of do it, well, is we script it and I can show you kind of what that looks like. We, we started scripting it just to kind of help us out and look at different, different formations just to make sure that we got in all of our formations before so we go into it saying, all right, we're going to run these three things, these formations, these plays to get them doing this. And then we have like, oh, crap answers where it's like, okay, if we can't execute this stuff, then we're going to this 12 personnel. But we're going to save this 12 personnel look as long as we can and go from there. And I feel like that helps out a lot. So. Absolutely. So here we probably should have pulled the ball. And if we would have, we probably would have had a great play here. But you see where they're coming? They're all coming in. The so now we know we got the perimeter for it set up for us. So I'm trying to find the spread ones. That's the ones I'm looking for. But for some reason, these didn't tag out right. So having to go all digital, it's, you know, you don't have, I have access to all my stuff from the spring, but I don't have any access to, Oh, this is backed up. What yeah, do you think different up. here, Coach, for what we're kind of talking about? What are, What's your mindset when you're on this yard line? So when we're getting backed up, so we called just our base play here, understanding that we're probably going to get a give, um, knowing that – see, so, like, that's easy for us. We can just call our base play. You know, now if the end's messing with us, like, we weren't good enough at this point in the season. This is when we right. um, But we'll probably get into more of a 12 personnel set and just run our base inside zone or power. So, so here they got us. They got us pretty good. Now the right tackle's not in the right spot, and we're ch chasing movement here. But at the end of the day, this is what happens when you hit the ball downhill tight. 
you're asking this guy to fit that gap and he's got to be perfect. So we screw up everything here up front. We don't block our gap. We're not passing off the movement and we still gain four yards and push it off with the free hitter. So we're getting in a 12 personnel set and adding a gap helps us out. You got the tight end fan in here. You got him coming across. If they want to blitz, good luck. If we actually do this right and the center comes and cleans this up and this tackle doesn't chase, we got everything we want and we're probably going hitting our head on the goalpost, mm -hmm. you know, because I got gaps for gaps here. And so that's kind of what we look for. Now, as you see this film come along, you'll see like it look a little bit cleaner, it's starting to look cleaner here mm -hmm. from, and we get a little bit better and it's a lot easier to manipulate. In this scenario, like going into this game, this is the first game where we felt confident, like, hey, we're going to be able to run inside zone at a decent pace here and not just get absolutely demolished um, and be able to actually start to execute a game plan. Like, I'm not going to lie to you, game two, three, four, five, and six was a straight struggle. Like, we were bad. We had 184 yards of total offense versus Morehouse. We were god awful. Um, we had First Charleston Sutter, I think we had like 250 yards of total offense. This was the first game where we had 284 yards of offense, 336 total yards of offense. Um, threw the ball pretty decently, threw the ball for like 120 yards. Um, we ran the ball for 285, like had a good little flow to us. And we got smoked, but it was the first time that we had come together as an offense. Like every week with these kids, just because we didn't have enough time to build them, um, it was like, okay, we got to, after the first game, we have to play with better effort. After the second game, it was like, continue to play with better effort. So our first three games are just teach them how to play with effort. Then it was, okay, now this is what inside zone is, and this is how we're going to work it. Because we played odd teams that we couldn't run inside zone to. So we had to work that. Then we played Charleston Southern and couldn't get a first down to save our life. We were plus four and lost. Like, that never happens. But we couldn't get a first down. We couldn't stay on the field. They didn't understand, hey, it's third and three. You're probably going to get this blitz. You know what I mean? Tried to talk about it, but they didn't understand it. So now we go back in and talk about that stuff. So now they're in this mode, and they're like, okay, now I kind of understand football. Now I understand a little bit more scenario, and now we're kind of getting into the flow of it. And you'll see the next three weeks, we just kind of take off and go shoot to the moon. So this is what I was talking about, two by two here. Like we knew in two by two that this mic wouldn't scrape. So now this is exactly what we want. We got two on two on the outside. The safety doesn't adjust with motion. And now we're reading and pitching off of this right here. Now you'll see the quarterback, he should stretch it a little bit more. Well, he hands this one off, which is a smart job. But you'll see the next one here where he should hand it off. And he doesn't. So, so this was the cool part about this season was where every week we just got a little bit better. And now when we got to spring, we were so much further ahead because every kid had played. You know, every freshman, everybody played. There was no one that didn't play last season. So when we got to spring, we were a little bit further ahead and they were able to pick up on stuff. Let's see, this is just a finish by the right guard here. You just got to catch it, finish. Center's in a good spot. We don't have the tackle there, we're good. But this is the little stuff we're talking about that we hadn't got to yet. Watch the center here. So I'm telling the center to get back vertical right here. Well, his backer has left. So most people, this is kind of where we're different. Most people that run inside zone would ID this guy and say, hey, we're working the first double team to him. So the center would work there, and then they let this guy come in and fold it make the play make the play well we're we're different in that regard so we just block gaps because we have the threat of read zone off of it so i don't have to block him you know what i mean i don't have to go five for five in the box i can read him so as what we're doing here is we're saying you got the a gap when that a gap leaves you're going to snap to cover the next so he's going to see this linebacker leave it's gone like he should just go clean this hole out right now and just track it and build a wall if we get this cut off, you see how nice this hole is right here. See what I mean? If he's clean that, mm -hmm. even if this guy doesn't reach it, he's now able to transition it this way yeah. a little bit more. And so those are the things that you'll see as we go along start to occur. We didn't bust any big ones here. 
that was the hard part. Like we didn't have any explosive plays until the end of the year. So we we it's hard to score without explosive plays. Yeah, we try to get five a game. Now we would have 17, 18, stuff like that, but we wouldn't have any 20 yard plays and it killed us, you know, because now you're going on 10 play drives. It's hard. So here, this is kind of what we weren't good at yet. But when we move, when we get inside zone movement, he's got this A gap. You know what I'm saying? So this is kind of what we're trying to get into here, which we get to eventually. But you'll see guys move. And we'll be able to pick them up here later. Now, this is part of the game plan deal. We didn't expect them to blitz us as much. They came out and they blitzed us. They got us in this scenario. Um, positive thing, like I said, we, after this game, we started going versus our defense a lot more, and they blitz a lot. So we got able the ability to pick that stuff up a heck of a lot better, and that helped us out. As you see the scenario here, we're on a two-minute drive. Right here, second quarter, 57 seconds left. We're on the 35-yard line, and we're running our base play here. Mm -hmm. We know it can hit at any time. You've seen what's happened before. These are in game sequence. Um, so you can see, like, we're pretty confident in it. Probably we're a little too confident early on in it, but we just didn't have any other answers at that point in our game. And that's kind of what we – that's what I pride myself on, is, like, building foundations. So, like – we're going to run inside zone and perfect inside zone before we do anything else. So we spend the first four days at install just doing inside zone stuff. And so what it does is it gives you a base to build on. Now, the reason why I say that with us is just because you're seeing how much we're struggling with like movement and this is week six. You know what I'm saying? So for us, like getting those intricacies down takes more time than a base traditional offense. So if you're a base traditional offense, you're not going to run inside zone for six days before you put in another play. But in our minds, the way I think about it, when I'm installing it for the O-line and the backs and all that, is you're getting bank reps at certain things. So now when I put in power on day five, it's no different because the only difference is we're gap away and we're pulling a guard. And so we just kind of build on concepts. Like in this game, we put in counter in the middle of the game and average five yards a pop on it. So. the way we build levels with everything and that's kind of what our philosophy is to build on everything so when we we're starting to talk about install right now how do we install certain concepts that match up with each other that equal the quarterback's drops that equal the quarterback's footwork so that way everything's the same that way he's getting you know he's taking he might be only taking three reps of that play a day but he's really taking seven reps of that drop a day you know what i'm saying and trying to build on that so but going into this, we knew out of 11 personnel, we were going to get this look right here. Or out of, 12, out of 10 personnel, we were going to get them spread out into this look right here. So we would get them spread out in a 4-1 box with no motion adjustment. So that's why we ended up doing this. And so you just look at things and find consistencies. And that's kind of what we're looking for is just what is the most consistent formation we see with the less, least amount of variations, and then we go from there. So. Oh, that's awesome, Chris. So what else? So off of that, when it comes to the passing game, we end up just kind of looking at what are they playing and how do we adjust it off of that. And so we go from there with it. But for an example in that regard, I can show you kind of what we did versus Albany. I don't know if I have Let me pull up a game plan so you can kind of see what ours looks like. Um, Game plan we had going into it. I think that was one of them that I saved. Um, yeah, I'll call the game plan template. So, oh, 
one second, let me share this with the screen so you can kind of see what our thought process is with it. So right here, let me go to page one. This is kind of what we look at going into it. So we have, uh, let me uh, escape out of this so you can kind of, so I can zoom it in. So we keep our base formations, like I said, 11 at the top. So we'll draw in, like we knew they were going to set the three technique to the tight end. And so we have kind of our plays that we want in here. So we'll have those plays in there that we want to run to each side. And then we'll have our adjustments off of it. This is how they're going to line up to an overset. We know they're going to do a three by one check. Free safety's here. Mike's going to bump. We have what we want to run the inside zone because I got this corner fit and then the safety high. And then we'll go to ace twins. And we look at that and we're saying, okay, we know we're not going to get an extra fitter here when we call motion. We should read this guy, pitch off this guy. We want to run our base inside zone triple to the left. And then we'll just draw it up versus each one. And this is kind of our basic deal right here of just how we kind of roll through it all. That's so, also awesome. just great. It's different. Yeah. So we just kind of keep it the same way and just kind of roll with it. So we spread would be a big one. Like you saw the way they lined up on film. This is how we had it drawn up in the box. Mm -hmm. So we would do it out of 11 personnel or 10 personnel, depending upon what we wanted in the game. So, and that's kind of what we do with our formations is we just kind of keep them to where they can be in any personnel group. So it makes it simple. So then we had our 13 personnel heavy package here. We had our 12 personnel, Y, double Y off. And then back then we were running under center stuff, trying to, we weren't very good at it. So we kind of scrapped it after this game and had that in there. But this is what we know going into the game. We kind of put our top formations here. So we know it's spread and true. It would be a good one. And then Yoes and Yotrey, which are just our three by one, two by two Y offs. We knew those would be our two best formations. And then our top pass was just a dig to the boundary. Mm -hmm. And because we knew they were going to play three over or four over three to the field. So we were screwed there and we get one on one on the backside. And then we have our scenario calls here. And so when they come into this, we just call them down the line to start off with. And so this one doesn't have our, our plays finished in it, but you can kind of see the first 11 plays right. of what we're doing. This is, I don't think I, we were finished with this one when I sent it to Russ. I have them all on my other computer, but I didn't have them. Um, I don't, I just had to pull these out of emails. Let me see if I saved another one. Um, so, but yeah, you can kind of see what we're doing off of that. Mm -hmm. So then we kind of adjusted it a little bit. So kind of the new way we're looking at things is, can you see this one right here? It says 11 personnel at the top. No, it's just the same screen. Okay. The last I got you. One. Yeah, this this you have to unshare that one, share another one. Yeah. All right. So now there it is. Go. I can see it now. All right. So this is kind of the new way we're going to it. And we just kind of try to do trying to figure out the best way that works for us. So this is kind of our new way of looking at it. Um this spring, this is kind of how we adjusted it, just because we saw our defense every day, so we didn't need to make that same sheet. So with the other one, we will use that as like our base, like, hey, how you feeling the plays, just like your normal box stuff, you know, that most people draw on the board. We just do it on them. And now we'll start to transition to this format where we look at it like out of personnel groups. So the way we have it set up is here's all our triples. Here's the best triples to run versus our defense in the spring. Here's our best double options or RPOs. And then here's our best inside zone RPOs. So we have double option RPOs where we can – hand the ball off or throw it. And then we have inside run RPOs where we just call power bubble, call power glance, stuff like that. And then in the next column, we have it separated out by play actions off of the triple. So what are our best play actions off the triple? What are our best play actions off of this protection drop back? This protection, which is like a naked protection, and then just straight drop back. So those are what we'll call going into it. And we kind of highlight the ones that we think are the best. And then we'll do it in a third down scenario. So it's all on one sheet. So you can just look at it by personnel group. And we think it's going to help us organize it better. So in our heads, so it's like, hey, we're in 11 personnel. What's our best call? All right, boom. Mm -hmm. Getting middle pressure. Let's call this one. Bam. 
you know, and they're just kind of separated out by power inside zone and then power read. So we just kind of separate it out like that. First mm -hmm. pressure, what's our best protections? And then versus Tampa two, what they played on third and eight, what's our best deal? So we just kind of separate it out like that. So then we get to the season, we'll start to manipulate it a little bit more and make it look like both. But this we felt like was a lot better for us um, to kind of be organized. And that's the hard part, like for guys, it's just like, what works for you? Some people like those whole big sheets. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm not a big fan of that because we don't have a lot of plays. We run two different plays. We run inside zone and run power. We run mix in some speed options. So that being said, like, it's not, you know, we don't have to have like, hey, what's our best run? on third down and we're sending this blitz. Whereas some people, they have that ability. So everything kind of builds off each other, much like the triple option under center. And so that's kind of the way we've felt is best for us, so. Oh, that's good. That's good stuff, Coach. But um, let me ask you this and I can get you out on this. I'm gonna keep you all day, but uh, what, when is, when in the game, is it time to change the plan? You know, so we, we kind of – this is something I think people struggle with, maybe more at high school level, I don't know. But we've kind of said all week we're going to – we like this personnel group, we like this formation, we're going to get this. Uh, you know, at what point is it changing it too early? You know, you did it once and something didn't work and you give up. That's not always a great plan. And then sometimes people – uh, in high school anyway, we had the old saying like, you know, they try to fix it on Saturday, meaning – you know, the game's over. They watched the film and said we should have done this instead, I guess. What, what I don't even know if there's a good answer to that question, but when do you guys say, you know, all right, we're, we're done with that. We're on to something new in the middle of the game. So the way we segment out our game plan is really just kind of the way we look at it. Like, we have first half, like our first 11 calls. We'll go through those. Those are our – like, we probably averaged, shit, I don't know, probably 16 yards of play on the first play like hit on the first play like every time because we knew exactly what they were going to be and exactly how they were going to be. So like our first drive, first couple drives go with our base formations. And so we kind of treat the first half and the second half similarly. So we'll go through our whole game plan of what we think our best answers are to everything. And so if let's say an answer doesn't work, then we'll scratch that answer off and go to the next one. So we kind of have set it out where we're really just building for the second half. And so if we think a certain formation is going to be good for us and we come back out and we're like, well, that didn't work, then we'll just scratch it off and move to the next one. And we have about four formations in the first half or four certain looks that we get that we think are going to be good for us. Now, if those aren't good, then we cross them off and then we kind of work to the next one. And that's what I was kind of saying. We always have that 12 personnel or that 21 personnel answer that we know is always going to be consistent. Yeah. So you're going to get one of them. And we know going into it, it's going to be one of these three formations that are going to be consistent. And so, like, we've done that many a time. Like, we left, like I said, we left the Benedict game and we said we should run speed option. You know, we came out with a win, thank goodness. But at the end of the day, we should have just run speed option all day. And we didn't execute it well enough or we were slow and we didn't trust it good enough to kind of make it work. And so we do the same thing with that regard. But I think it just comes down to like, you have to, in my personal opinion, you got to talk to your players and find out what they're confident in. Because I can be confident in something, but if the guys are not trusting it or they don't feel good about it, then it's not gonna work, you know? So we talk to the players a lot at halftime, like, hey, what do you like? What do you think is going to work? What do you feel confident in? So at the end of the day, when they come back out of it, like like the other offensive coordinator always makes fun of me because he's like, how did that guy make a play on this? It's a totally busted play and all this. And I'm like, well, I asked him what he wanted. He wanted this play, so he's going to make it work because he wants it. And I think if you put the onus on the kids a little bit more and, and trust their opinion, then it'll it'll work out. And we did that. It's prime example. We did in the spring game. It's fourth and four. And we asked them what they wanted to call. And they said, Coach, we want to call it tall sweep. And we said, well, the look's going to be terrible. And you have to make this block, this block, and this block in order for it to work. And they said, 
wish we got it. And they did it, you know, and they, they executed. So you, you wouldn't call it that way. Like if I was in my right mind, I would not, we like, we went back and we're like, why do we call this? Well, the kids wanted this and they wanted to execute it. And if they have a will to do it, then they're going to do it, you know, because we get into certain scenarios, you know, where teams better than us, you know, how are we going to manipulate them? And what do you feel confident in? Because just because the numbers look good, we talk about this all the time, just because the numbers look good, if that three technique's a better player than my guard, we're going to lose. You know, so what other things does the quarterback feel confident in throwing? What other things does the O-line feel confident in blocking? Hey, coach, let's just run power. You know, that'll kind of eliminate. Okay. Hey, go to power. You know, let's roll with power. Let's roll with this. Hey, coach, I'm really kicking this guy's butt on this block. All right, well, what can we do to give you that? You know, and so we kind of talk to them and let them – you know, we have control over it, but just find out what's good with them in the second half. And then we kind of go from there and knowing our built-in answers, like, hey, this guy's playing soft. Like, we're going to kick his ass. Okay, we're on the ball to the right. You know, hey, this and that. Hey, coach, I'm burning this corner left and right. Call, get me one-on-one with him. Okay, hey, like we did in the spring game. So we hadn't done it at all, but we went into the halftime. We're down. And the the receiver's like, I can burn this corner on one-on-one. The, the quarterback was like, yeah, coach, I got that one-on-one. So he just said, okay, if you get pressed, convert it to a go. If he's off, run a hitch, and then we'll call our RPOs to this side, and you can kind of pick what you want. And he made four really good throws to the receiver one-on-one because he pressed them and they felt confident in it. You know, right, wrong, or indifferent, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? So, but at the end of the day, those guys got to execute and make plays. So, the more I think you can put on the kids and the more they understand it and the more that they have they have an input in it, the better off you're going to be because they're not following blindly. You know, we're not big believers in following blindly. Like, just because I say something's right, I don't you – you can still question me on it, you know. Like, why are we doing this, Coach? Well, this is why. Well, th- that's not working, you know. Okay, well, what do you want to do? Well, let's try this. All right, well, hey, call it. Call it next time. It's on you. You know what I mean? And it's the same thing, just kind of building that camaraderie with them and just right. making sure that, like we talk about, them becoming experts in their job. We want them to become experts. Like, you guys play the game. You know, I might coach you one thing. This is, the, this is my base understanding of it. But if you can execute it in some confined area of that where your technique's good enough to win, like, go win. You know, and so we kind of talk about that a lot, just like putting onus on the kids, because the more they have invested, the more they're going to play hard and the more they're going to execute and the better off you're going to be. That's exactly right, Coach. That's, that's a good way to um, to close it out. It, you know, it's all about the players, and uh, the players going to win the game, Coach. You no know, doubt about that. The longer I coach, the more I realize that. It wasn't about yeah. me. Um, Coach, I, couldn't, I can't thank you enough for joining me. That was really informative. I mean, it was awesome. You got some film. Uh, got some game planning, and, and I think we may be able to help some people out. I uh, really appreciate you coming on. Uh, now that I'm not coaching, I'm at the central office working. I, maybe I can get down to Savannah sometime and see you guys play. Yeah, well, there's there's nothing bad about coming to Savannah. That's an easy sell for Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. That, that's kind of what we do, and anyone listening to this is welcome anytime. We we love talking ball, and, you know, you can follow me on Twitter at Coach Nate Baker. Just – Hit me up, you know, and love to talk some ball with you guys. And the more we can just grow the game and you guys as high school coaches do so much for it, it's, you know, you guys have the hardest job, you know, making sure these kids stay safe and just growing them and teach them how to be a man. And that's really huge for us because when they get to our level, you know, I don't have to do as much, you know, I do some, but not as much as y'all. So I appreciate you guys and appreciate you having me on. Yeah, thanks, Coach. Appreciate you.